Welcome back. So in this lecture, I'm going to teach you how to do unit testing, the custom middleware in an ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET 5 application. And the scope of the presentation is as follows. You learn how to test custom middleware in isolation and how to test if your middleware handled a request or if it called the next middleware in the pipeline. So stay tuned for some interesting session. So I've opened Visual Studio 2019 and let's create a new project. So let's go for the ASP.NET Core web application and click on next. Let's uh, give it a name. Custom, custom middleware unit. test okay and click on create so by default in my computer it has uh, highlighted the ASP.NET Core web app model view controller so I will persist with that configure will not configure it for HTTPS and then cre create and it's creating the project will come back Now call this class status middleware. So status middleware and click on add. It will create the status middleware class for me. So I will now paste the code that I have on my clipboard which is this private read only request delegate underscore next. Now here it is looking for some reference. So let's click on the light bulb icon. So this using statement it requires microsoft.asp.core.http. So everything is all right. Just click on the save button. It will save. Now let's see explain different part of this uh, program application. So this part request delegate, it is representing the rest of the middleware pipeline. And this, uh, this is called called invoke is called when the middleware is executed. And this is the part. This is the part that starts with front slash ping and a pong response is returned. Okay, and await next is if the path starts with ping upon the response is returned, which I just told, and otherwise the next middleware in the pipeline is invoked. It's as simple as that, I think. Now, here is a word warning. So, where possible, I recommend you don't directly inspect paths in your middleware like this. A better approach is to use endpoint routing instead. Okay. So this middleware in this tutorial is for demonstration purposes only. So middleware is slightly compli complicated to unit test because the HTTP context object, you know, is conceptually a big class. It contains all the details for the request and the response, which can mean there is a lot of surface area for your middleware to interact with. For that reason, I find unit tests tend to be slightly coupled to the middleware implementation, which is generally undesirable. For the first test, you look at the case where the incoming request path doesn't start with front slash ping. Okay, so bear in mind, you look at the case where the incoming request path doesn't start with the, this uh, root front slash ping. In this case, status middleware should leave the HTTP context unchanged. Okay, so and should call the request delegate provided in the constructor which represents the next middleware the, in the pipeline. Okay, so let's go for the next step. So now I will create an X unit test project in .NET Core by clicking this template and click on next. And I will name it test project. middleware test project okay this is actually better 
let it be known as custom middleware test project okay and click on create it will create the test project with all the x unit dependencies are already assembled so it creates a fact attribute and class unit test one and it uses the x unit library okay so let's see now namespace what this is asking is no okay that's fine it's working and then it should uh, reference this project dependencies right click add project reference with the reference to this custom middleware unit test project that we have just created now so click on ok so it will have its dependency in this right so next we'll write the test so first we'll rename it in a more professional way you know, using best practices so this was actually testing a this is this class is testing custom middleware okay so i will name it something like uh, middleware this something that makes sense middleware test okay so control s and then i will copy over the code that i've got on my clipboard and start explaining line by line so at line number 14 that is var context equals new default http context this creates a default context http context and sets the path for the request and here var was executed equals false this tracks with the request delegate was executed and then we come to this part request delegate next so this part it is the request delegate representing the next middleware should be invoked in this example okay because it is actually uh, it was executed equals false and in this case it needs to be executed should be invoked in this example and this is the var middleware this line this creates an instance of the middleware passing in the next request delegate okay and then comes uh, this await statement middleware dot invoke it invokes the middleware in the http context should invoke the request delegate okay and then verifies request delegate was invoked when the middleware is invoked it checks the provided path and finds that it doesn't match the required value of front slash ping that is what we're our uh, starting point so it is front slash something else the middleware therefore calls the next request delegate and returns okay the other obvious case to test is when the request path is front slash ping and so the middleware should so if we now run this test it passes you know if you run this test repeat last run i have already run it once so if i repeat the last test run it will again pass so this is obvious that it will pass because it is asset dot true was executed so if exec was executed as put to be true so this is this test is passed okay now let's test let's write another unit test for this status middleware when a matching path is provided so the positive case unit test is made more complex by the need to read the response body to confirm it contains pong okay so now i have written the code the unit test for uh, which is named as returns pong body content now let's explain see what is happening in each of these lines now here in uh, this first part uh, this is the line 31 it creates a default uh, if first is body stream which is a memory stream type object is created and then a context is create created with a default http context and initializes the body with a memory stream to capture the response okay and then this is the path so the path is set to the required value for the status middleware and then see this is actually uh, this is line 35 and line this is line 36 so what happens is it creates an instance of the middleware and passes a simple request delegate and then 
await middleware dot invoke. This statement invokes the middleware, and then this statement. Uh, then this entire block of code, right from line 38 here over to line 43, what they do, it rewinds the memory streams and responds and reads the response body into a string. Okay, it reads the response body into a string, which is a response, string response. Okay, and then in the last three lines, asset dot equal pong and response, it verifies the response as the correct value. And it verifies this uh, line 45. It verifies the content type response is correct. Okay. And the last one is status code response is correct. So, as usual, let's run this test also. So, click on test and run all tests. Okay. Let's see. This test is running now. It will take a while. We'll come back when the test is. So, Now, this is all tests have passed, returns Pong body content has passed also. Now, we can see that the unit testing middleware requires a lot of setup to get it working. On the positive side, it allows you to test your middleware in isolation, but in some cases, especially for simple middleware without any dependencies on databases or other services, integration testing can, which is surprisingly a bit it is it becomes it easier and next in the next lecture we can create we'll create an integration test for this middleware to see the difference all right 